about Henry's Law, and I was recently with my boy Wallace, and we were discussing his Panda Pop issues. He opened it, and it started hissing, and he was asking me, why is that happening? And I told him Henry's Law, and he was like, what is that? And I was like, I'll teach you in a podcast, and he's like, sure. So, what's going on with his Panda Pop is that when he opens it, the pressure above the can is decreasing. And when it decreases, the solubility of the carbon dioxide in the drink is also decreasing. And if it decreases, it wants to escape the solution here at the Panda Pop. And when it escapes the solution, we get that hissing noise. We can generalize what happened with Wallace by saying that the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above the liquid. So in mathematical terms, so C is the concentration or the solubility, and C is measured in many things. We can have a mole fraction, we can have a volume to volume ratio, or we can have something like molarity, which is most commonly used. K is what's our Henry's Law constant. I'll get back to that right after I discuss pressure. So yeah, P is pressure, like I just said, and it's usually measured in atmospheres. So K, like the concentration, can have different values. But in this case, and most likely the case, we're going to be using moles over liters times atmospheres, which is just simply just molar over liters. And now when we use this, we use this equation. But when we use different units, we have different equations with Henry's Law. So we have a problem. Let's look at it. So we have how many grams of carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in a one liter bottle of carbonated water if the manufacturer uses a pressure of 3.4 atmospheres in the bottling process at 25 degrees Celsius. So as we're given, we have that the Henry Law constant of CO2 in water is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter times atmosphere, or molar over liters at 25 degrees Celsius. So again, we see that 25 degrees Celsius remains a constant in this process. And that tells us a lot about Henry's Law. Temperature must remain constant in order for Henry's Law to work. Aside from temperature, a lot of other conditions need to be satisfied, but we'll talk about that later in this video. So we need to approach this problem by first looking at what we have. So I highlighted what we have. So we, we're dealing with carbon dioxide, a 1 liter bottle, 3.4 atmospheres, and 25 degrees Celsius. So how do we approach this problem? Well, we have our equation C equals K times P. So what we want to do is plug in our values. We have our K is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2 over liters times atmospheres. And then we want to multiply by pressure. As we can see, when we do our dimensional analysis, the units cancel, the pressure cancels, and we're left with moles per liter, or molarity. And so that is our concentration. But we're looking for the grams of carbon dioxide. So given our concentration, we want to find the number of moles. And in order to do that, what we do is we multiply by 1 liter. And in doing so, we cancel out the liters. Once we've done that, we want to multiply by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44 grams. And then we get that about 5 grams of carbon dioxide uh, dissolve. Henry's Law is only useful in a very select amount of solutions. The solvent in a solution cannot react with the solute. That's the first important point to note about Henry's Law. And the pressure can't be very high. We've also noted that the temperature needs to remain constant. So that's all for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, favorite, and subscribe. And again, guys, the more you know, the better you are.